come let's sing unto the Lord. Come before Him with thanksgiving. Sing for the Lord Yahweh is a great God and the great King above all gods. Oh, come let's sing unto the Lord. Come before Him with thanksgiving. To bring you to an expected end. And I told you that God said that when you transition through difficulties, that is momentarily, that you are passing through to the plan God has proposed for you. Praise the Lord. So I want you to let God's word resonate in your spirit. Because that's what is going to take you go beyond your expectation. So the Lord is saying this morning that I want He wants to share with you what hinders your victory. Victory hindrances. The theme of the message. Victory hindrances. Do you know that some weeks ago I taught you about opening the gates? How you open the gates of heaven for your blessings. And the Lord is saying that some people open the gate and after a while they will shut it. How many of you have a bunch of keys? When you have a bunch of keys and you don't know which key opens which door, you are in trouble. If your enemy is pursuing you and you run to your house and you don't know the key that opens your house, you've been there looking for the key, the enemy will come and capture you. That's why a lot of people suffer long in a situation without experiencing God's deliverance. You said, I've been praying, I've been trusting the Lord. Because you don't know the key that opens the door of your blessings. The word of God is here for us. These are the keys. But I would only zero in on the major key, the master key. I'm going to zero in on the master key this morning. And that master key deals with unforgiveness. Amen. That's a master key that can lock you up and lock you down. I want to take you step by step for you to understand. Matthew 5 24 said, If I want you to flash it, Matthew 5 24. Flash it, let me tell you what, how it's important. Jesus said, Leave if you have problem with your brother or your sister or someone and you brought your gift to give he said leave it at the altar don't give it yet because I'm not going to accept it Amen. leave there the gift before the altar and go that way first be reconciled to who? and then come and offer what? so that God can do what? because when God accepts it your gate opens hallelujah when God accepts your gift, your gift does what? Open. So that is to show you that God, who can wait for an offering? A man told God, wait, let me go and get my offering. And God waited. That shows that offering is important to God. That's why he waited. And then he said, before you give your offering, and you remember that you are not at peace with someone. Say, so keep it. Even though I'm waiting for it, go and make that peace. And come back. And give your offering. Most of us as Christians, there are certain parts of the Bible that when we read it, we think. Master was thinking the same way until the Spirit of the Lord opened my mind. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. 
The Lord will open your eyes this morning. He said, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be lost in heaven. Most of you think he's binding Satan and his group. <laughs> Satan and his group are there in heaven. You cannot suspend somebody who doesn't work for you. You can't. You can't even fire somebody who is not in your, under your employment. So, the Bible is telling you here that whatever you bind, when you bind your fellow man or woman who has offended you, and then you told God to forgive you your trespass, as you forgive them that trespass against you, and you here did not forgive, in heaven, you are bound to. You bind somebody here, and you bind yourself in heaven. Because you are a child of the kingdom. So that you can testify as much as you want to testify. As long as you are bind, the gate is not opening for you. It will not. The Bible gave us example of a man who owes millions of dollars to the king and the king, the master called him and forgave him. He saw somebody that owed about six dollars something to him. He grabbed him. He said, I will let you go until you pay. The man pleaded. He refused. So when the master had it, he got a hold of him and cast him into prison until he pays off his debt. That's what is happening to us when we don't learn how to forgive. You're struggling to make a move. You don't know you're binding yourself in heaven. And God wants to lose you this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You got to lose them yeah. so you could be free. Yeah. Amen. Let me tell you how important that is. Let me tell you how important forgiveness is. God doesn't play with that. That is very important. Look at Jesus. Luke 23, verse 34. Luke 23, verse 34. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they battered his remnant and cast lots. That's when they were killing him. Jesus couldn't have gone to heaven with unforgiven spirit. Because he has bound himself. And the Savior cannot bind himself to be our Savior. You got to lose them so that you be loose. Hallelujah. To see how important it is. Let us look at Stephen. When Stephen Acts of Apostles chapter 7, let's read from verse 57. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears. That when Stephen was taking them step by step of the goodness of God and what God has done. And they didn't want to hear it. And ran out unto him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stole him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord, Receive my spirit. And he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Hallelujah. 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 Stephen has to let himself free. Amen. You and I today will be there cursing and binding. All this stone you are throwing at me, I bind you in Jesus' name. I'm not going to forgive you. I can't take this. And when you're doing that, you lock up your gate. 
So that's why every move you make, you not see any victory. The testimony, God wants you to testify. You can testify as much as you want to. As long as you binded yourself over there, your gate is shut. Until when you open that gate by letting go. Do you know that the Bible made it clear that vengeance doesn't belong to you? It doesn't belong to me? Then why are we trying to hold vengeance by unforgiveness? I don't care how little that is. You cannot hold it. If you hold it, you bound yourself in heaven. You're not going to get anywhere with God. Because if you saw Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, could come down here and be disgraced and killed, stoned, done everything because of you, because of me, for the debt we could not pay, that we might be free. And you said, I can't forgive this little one who insulted me. Who insulted me? Who lied against me? Who gossiped against me? Who took what I didn't give to them? Hmm. I will not let go. And when you do that, you bind it yourself in heaven. Because you're binding something here on earth. The Bible says that those things you bind on earth will be what? That's right. That's why you can pray as much as you want to. You can testify as much as you want to. It's not getting beyond the roof. Because something is bind, is bind. Something that is loose is does what? How many of you are ready to lose it this morning? Hallelujah. How many are ready to lose it this morning? Because when you lose it, you'll be free. Those who are in Christ Jesus are free. And they are free indeed. Jesus himself, at the point of death, said, Father, don't hold this against them. Hallelujah. How many of you have been treated to the point of death that you should be holding something somebody did to you? You got to let go so that you'll be free. So that the testimony of the Lord will manifest in your life. So that you can move forward and obtain God's favor. Jesus taught us how to pray. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 6, where we took our Bible lesson. After this man are therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven. I'm reading from verse 9. Hello be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in what? Give us this day our daily bread. Verse 12 is very important. And forgive us our debts as we did what? How wonderful. That is signing the mortgage. If you pay, you get your title. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, as you forgive, that is the payment. And the title is, God has forgiven you too. So, if you say, I'm not going to pay, <laughs> and you want to get a title, <laughs> the bank will give it to you, and God either. You can have to let go. I don't care how hurtful the action is. I don't care. The enemy will be singing that as a song in your heart so that you don't forgive. So that you could, so that you could be still bound in heaven. You'll be singing it. Anytime he sang it, you remember it, you get angry. They will be laughing. Yeah. Holding him and I'm holding you over there. Remember the devil knows the world more than you do. He was from there. He knows the things, the desires, the things God require. Because God is God of covenant. God is God of covenant. He said, as we forgive them. And lead us, the next verse says, lead us not into what? In temptation of unforgiveness. Hallelujah. He said, lead us not into the temptation of what? Unforgiveness. 
Because that's what ties our progress. I said, that what ties what? <laughs> Lead us not into temptation. You were just asking for forgiveness and you, you agreed that you will forgive as God has forgiven. And then the next one, Jesus said, pray that lead us not into temptation so that I don't bind myself when I'm trying to bind somebody here on earth. Do you know that the temptation of anger, unforgiveness is a big one? So, none of us have got into the level of where somebody, Jesus, Peter said, this kind of prayer, if my brother does it to me, 70 times, Jesus said, you forgive. And he know that this is for one day. <laughs> that your brother must have brought you, tie you in the, in, the, in the room, and start doing things bad to you, to make it 70 times in a day. 70 times, sir. But, that tells you there's no amount of offense anybody should do to you that you should hold it without unforgiveness. Because if you do that, you binded yourself in heaven and binded yourself here on earth. Because God is not going to move in your situation. I don't care how much you pray. I don't care how much you prophesy. I don't care anything you're going to do, you cannot move God's hands. If there are people that you'll be holding grudges against, today, you have to let go. So that the favor of the Lord will overtake you. Because I said, God, you gave me this team while I was overseas, praying in my room. You said, this is what we bring Desire victory in the life of your people. And then the year coming to an end, I say, God, how many of them have experienced it? He said, Very few. And I say, How oh, why not? He said, I will give you messages. You need to preach to them, to deliver them, so that they will obtain their victory. So he said, Unforgiveness is one of them. How many of you somebody have stoned? Removing the clothes on your body. Stephen went through that, a human being like us. If I give you an example of Jesus Christ, you will say Jesus Christ is God. What about Stephen? A human being like us, born in the flesh. But when he was heading out, he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, may not this sin against them. Hallelujah. 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 And when he took that step of faith, Saul, who has been slaughtering Christians, was standing there. And Saul, I guess, Saul went home and started wondering what kind of God is this man, young man, serving that make him to say, God, to forgive us for the evil we are doing against him. I've never seen that kind of God. This kind of God, though. This kind of God, though. Blessed be his holy name. Paul said, which kind of God? Is it this one I'm going around to defend because they were not following the laws of Moses? And this one, we were killing him for not doing that. And he's asking for God to forgive us. That God must be a different God. I would like to know that one. Your act of forgiveness will bring souls to the kingdom of God. So many people you've binded are not coming to God because you buy them here. Amen. And heaven doesn't have open to accept them. You have to let them go so that heaven can accept them. 
Because the Bible, God of God of covenant doesn't change. He said that whatever you bind here is bound in heaven. And when you bind those unbelievers here by not forgiving them, that door is closed over there. So this morning, God said, your testimony that will bring victory has to come from forgiving whoever that might have offended you. You have to lay it on the cross. That's why Jesus came and died that we might have life and have it abundantly. The abundant life of Christ is for you, is for me. Why should we hold anger when we know that somebody already paid for that? Matthew 16 verse 19 said, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth. Hallelujah. So when you bind a soul here on earth, <laughs> God pick up that key, the, the, the duplicate key. You have the duplicate, God has the master. <laughs> he lock. Because you made a promise that if God forgive you, you will forgive. And you refuse to forgive. And you love the person. And God said, well, until you let go, he will not receive yours. So this morning, I'm not going to preach long. I just want to nail it so that you can think about it. And think about your freedom. And think about God's favor. I don't care what anybody did to you. Even, even if they sent you to bankruptcy. If they stole everything that belongs to you. They insulted you and they beat you up. Forgiveness is on the cross. Amen. Amen. Oh, come let's sing unto the Lord. Come before him with thanksgiving. The Lord Yahweh is a great God and the great King above all gods. Oh, come let's sing unto the Lord. Come before Him with thanksgiving. For the Lord Yahweh.